Hyperemesis gravidarum is the most severe form of nausea and vomiting in pregnancy, affecting about 0.3 to 2% of pregnant women. It is characterized by severe intractable nausea and vomiting, with signs of malnutrition, such as ketosis, and weight loss of more than 5% of pre-pregnancy weight. Other symptoms include excessive salivation, fatigue, weakness, dizziness, sleep disturbances, and mood changes. Persistent hyperemesis is associated with adverse maternal complications. Some of them include the following. Mallory Weiss tears due to intractable retching. In more severe cases, these tears might end up in perforation of the esophagus, pneumothorax, Wernicke's encephalopathy, liver disease, seizures, coma, and death. Renal failure, rhabdomyolysis, deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism, central pontine myelinolysis, vitamin K deficiency and coagulopathy, and sepsis. The pathological basis of hyperemesis is not well understood, and it has a multifactorial etiology, including high beta HCG levels, which induce a transient hyperthyroid state, gastric dysrhythmias, liver disease, and genetic factors. Risk factors for developing hyperemesis gravidarum include the following. Previous pregnancies with hyperemesis. High body mass index. Gestational trophoblastic disease multiple gestations, and nulliparity. Diagnosis of hyperemesis gravidarum is mainly clinical. Useful laboratory investigations include the following. Urinalysis for ketone bodies and specific gravity. A higher urine specific gravity indicates volume depletion. Serum electrolytes and ketone bodies. Liver enzymes and bilirubin. Since about 50% of women with hyperemesis gravidarum having elevated liver enzyme levels, hematocrit, to assess the volume status, and TSH or free thyroxine levels in blood. Obstetric ultrasonography is useful in detecting multiple gestations and gestational trophoblastic disease. Upper gastrointestinal endoscopy is useful when the patient is having upper GI bleeding and abdominal pain. Treatment options for hyperemesis gravidarum include the following. Patients presenting with signs of volume depletion should be rehydrated with normal saline and additional potassium chloride while monitoring serum electrolyte levels. Since these patients are having a thiamine deficiency and are at risk of developing Wernicke's encephalopathy, thiamine should be administered. It is important to note that dextrose infusions should not be given unless the sodium levels are normal and thiamine has been administered because it can aggravate Wernicke's encephalopathy. Antiemetics such as histamine receptor 1 antagonists and phenothiazines should be given to reduce vomiting. And finally, thromboprophylaxis with low molecular weight heparin should be given to prevent deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism.